This is a typical video cassette recorder. Now, I know that there are some teenagers out there that don't know what a video cassette recorder is anymore, and I can certainly understand that with all the DVD players and the whole nine yards, but believe it or not, some of us older folks like me, we actually use VCRs, okay? So this is a video cassette recorder. This is a forehead. I'm not going to tell you all the details about the VCR. Just, just kind of go along with this. Anyway, um... As you can see, there are indicator lights down here. The first one is power. Okay, that tells you that the, the VCR is on. Uh, you have a VCR TV. Now, what this means is that um, signals from your satellite dish or your television set can actually make it up to your television set without the VCR being on. Uh, but if you're going to want to record something on a VCR, then the VCR TV has to be lit up. Uh, because that means the signal is going first into the VCR, then it's going to the TV set. That's why they've got that in there. There's another one here that shows you that the tape is at, there's a videotape actually in the device, and I can actually show you that right now. See? VCR, uh, videotape. Okay, and once again you can see that the tape is in. Uh, there are other indicators lights on here. One of them is timer. You can actually set a timer on your VCR. This was one of the beautiful things when people owned them on a regular basis. They would set a timer for a certain period of time uh, when a TV program was on, and that way if they left the house, they could record the TV program without physically being there. And, of course, we have a light that shows that the thing is actually recording, which could be very important in case you missed your TV program. Anyway, um... When we're doing this, we want signals to go from your antenna, or it, usually in this case it either be from your cable company or your satellite dish. Now, as I told you in a previous video, just because you get your cable from a cable line does not necessarily mean that's how the cable company gets theirs. Usually if you go to their building, you're going to see on the top of their building a humongous satellite dish. That's where they get their signals. Okay? Then they pump it through the cable lines to you. Alright? Now... What you'll do is on the back, I had told you about coaxial cables in a previous video, there's usually going to be an input and an output, okay? And the input will come directly either from your cable company or your satellite dish, and then your output in this configuration is going to be fed into your RF modulator box. Now the reason why I have done this is because if you try to play a DVD through your VCR and into your television set, it's going to fade it in and out color, and that's because of some copyright protection that uh, they developed years ago to keep people from copying DVDs onto VHS tapes. I thought it was a little silly, but what do I know, okay? Anyway, we have got this configuration. We have the input of the VCR being fed from the cable company, and the output is coming out from the back of the VCR and hooking onto the input of the RF modulator. As you can see, this thing says antenna in. Of course, you probably can't see the words themselves. I'm going to try to get a little closer here. No, you can't see the words. But this says antenna in, and this is the antenna in line. This line hooks up to the output of the VCR. VCR out, antenna in on the RF modulator. Okay, and then the RF modulator out then goes to the television set, as you can plainly see right there. That is the other end of the cord that starts from the RF modulator, goes into the TV set. Okay, now you will also see our audio video cables. So you see all the audio video cables right across here? Well, they hook into the back of your DVD player. This thing has a DVD player. And you'll remember that the white is one audio, the red is the other audio, and the yellow is the video. You can see here, the white's kind of covering up the red here. And all three of these wires will feed into here because the DVD player does not have a coaxial cable hookup. It only hooks up through AV cables. That's what AV stands for, is audio video. Okay, So these AV cables will hook up in the back part of the DVD, and then they'll hook up in the back part of the RF modulator. And like I said, we've got, we've got this configuration. Satellite dish to VCR. 
VCR to RF modulator, RF modulator to TV. And that's how he got this hooked up. As you can see here, the RF modulator is on. There's the red light indicator. And what's going to happen here is if you want to watch a videotape from the VCR, you want to watch TV from the VCR, the VCR TV light must be on. But if you don't want the VCR to be involved in anything you're watching on your television, all you have to do is turn it off. Just like that. See, now the light is off, so everything from the cable company is bypassing the VCR and going directly into the TV. Turn it back on. There you go. All right. Now, if you want to watch something on your DVD player, of course, you'll just push the button right here. And it turns the DVD player on. You can see the indicator light here. Then you put a disc in here, and they, away you go. All right. I think you pretty much got the idea here. I'm going to go there, over this one more time just to be sure you understand. You're going to feed your cable line or your satellite dish line directly into the input part of your VCR. Then you're going to feed the output part of your VCR into your RF modulator. And VCR out, RF modulator in. RF modulator out, TV in. And that's how you're going to configure your equipment. At least this is how this equipment has been configured. Now there are different ways to configure things based on what you've bought. And if you want to talk about it in a future video and submit me a video response, I'd love to see it. I will tell you more in a future video, so stay tuned.